Hello everyone, good day, and today we're talking about my one of my uh, favorite film formats, Super 8, and this is it. Um, you might be familiar with Super 8 if uh, you've ever seen a movie where they're trying to replicate an old home movie from the 70s or 80s. Um, this was basically the home video camera before video was created. So this is it. Um, I have two of them actually. And this is uh, the Super 8 camera. This is a Canon. Um, over here you can see we have different frame rates. Um, some of the lower end Super 8 cameras uh, only do 18 frames per second. This one does 24. So um, I've had really good results with black and white film using this uh, and color as well. Uh, sometimes people think that Super 8 is, um, you know, it, it's crap. But when you see it replicated in like a movie or something, they're usually trying to go for some aesthetic of like an old home movie or something like that. So um, in reality, you can get a really good picture out of Super 8 if you shoot it correctly and then you get a professional scan. I think uh, some of the places in LA can even do like a 5K scan of Super 8. Um, so anyway, uh, so this is the camera here. Unlike a 16 millimeter, 35 millimeter, where you have to uh, load the film in a dark room, Super 8 does something differently. It does something different. It uses uh, cartridges, uh, much like a, um, a videotape. Um, here's a cartridge here. This is Kodak Tri-X um, black and white. Um, black and white and Super 8 uh, looks fantastic. And this is the um, the cartridge. I've already shot this cartridge, but uh, here it is. And you can see the film there. So basically, this is going to slide in like so. And then close the door. Lock it. And then we can turn it on. And you can hear, and that sound is the the motor um, shooting. Um, over here, um, most Super 8 cameras have an auto uh, setting, a manual uh, setting as well. But the auto setting works pretty good on Super 8 um, if you're just getting started with shooting film and you just want to have uh, some fun. So, once you have shot your cartridge, um, and depending on what frame rate you use, if you shoot 24 frames per second, this will be about uh, two and a half minutes. Um, if you shoot the 18 frames per second, you'll get a little bit more. Um, uh, so, it's not a lot, not a lot of film, um, you know, like I said, a couple of minutes. And every year the price on these on the film goes up. It also becomes uh, more rare. So hopefully um, there's still a lot of people who want to keep Super 8 alive. Now, once you have shot your Super 8 movie, you have your cartridge here. Take it down and you have to get it developed. Um, there's several places in LA. Um, there's some places that you can mail it in. Um, so you take it, you get it developed, and then this is what you get back. Um, this is uh, a film uh, that I shot on Super 8. Put this right here. Or maybe not. Okay. So this is what you get back, and as you can see, if I comes with some leader, and then um, we have our movie in here. And if you look really close up into the light, you can see that's me. Um, I uh, shot something. Uh, this looks like, yeah, that's black and white footage that I shot. 
Okay, so this is what you get back. And um, in the old days, this would be enough because the next thing you do, you have, is a projector. This is a Super 8 projector. Um, I have a couple of these. This is one that has sound. So if you have a Super 8 movie uh, uh, that has sound on it, which some do, uh, this will play the, the sound. I'm not going to open this, but you get the idea of a projector. This um, has a nice case. Um, it just keeps it. But basically, you run the film through the projector, and then you can watch it on the screen or on a on a wall or whatever. Um, so in the old days, that's as far as you could go. Now we have uh, computers, and everybody says, well, I want to get this onto the computer. I want to put it on YouTube. I want to edit and all of that. So there's a couple of ways to do that. First of all, we have the poor man's way. This is, this is a film transfer um, box. This is, uh, this is probably the fastest way to get your movie onto video. Basically, oh, sorry, Let's open this up. Okay, and this is it. So, you can, um, it's got a lot of outputs that you can, uh, and inputs, you can mix music in with it, but basically this is it here. So, what you're going to do is, uh, yeah, this side opens up. So, you attach the projector here. So, you, you turn on projector, you attach it here, and then it's going to display on this window. Um, and I think you can go, oh yeah, you can go through this way too. Um, so it's going to uh, display it on this window and then you use a video camera to film that. Uh, and that's how you get it onto a, uh, um, onto a computer. So you can use uh, your phone or whatever and you would just film the screen as the projector is. is the, so that's like the easy way. Um, also lets you plug in music and stuff like that so um that's like the most that's like the simplest way you can do it now if you don't want to do it that way you can the next step up is a film scan and film scan is much better um, quality and let me just here This is Film Scanner. Um, this is a Wolverine uh, film to digital movie maker. And basically what this does is you run your film through here. It's going to go through and it scans every frame. Um, it's a video scan. It then converts it into a QuickTime movie. So you get an MP4 uh, that you can put onto a card then you transfer that card onto your computer. So this is much better than that box. Um, but if that's all you have, that works. So this is a little bit better, um, although it is an SD scan and it's not going to give you the best result that, that you would get from like a professional scan. Uh, but but it it's pretty good. So what you would probably want to do, like back in the uh, the early days of, well back before we had uh, nonlinear editing, um, you would take the film onto a film splicer and then you splice it up, and then that would become your uh, master print that you could then go and uh, and convert. Um, so the good thing about these, uh, th this and that box there, is it allows you to run your film through, get it into the computer, cut it up 
um, in a non-linear way, and then if you um, you can decide what you want to keep, what you don't, and then when you go get your professional scan, uh, you can just scan what you ac actually need. Um, I'm not a uh, I'm not co directly connected with any of the Super 8 companies around here, but um, I was a member of the Echo Park Film Center for a while. There's a small place in Echo Park that does uh, Super 8. So if you just want to get started, I think they still have cameras there you can get. Um, also, there's a Pro 8 millimeter. That's uh, a great place to get you know, professional scans. You can scan probably all the way up to 4 or 5K Super 8. So um, I'd say uh, definitely check that out. And... That, I think, is it for Super 8 and uh, one of my favorite film formats. Um, so, uh, uh, send me a message. What do you think about Super 8? Do you have any questions about Super 8? Do you, uh, um, do you have, have you shot anything on Super 8 that you'd like to share? Let us know um, right here. On the Seth Martin Show, I'm your host, Dick Cavett. Good night.